to public hearing. Uh, we're moving into uh, our, first, yes, 5386, and staff, will you please brief the bill? Certainly, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Before you is, uh, for the record, Melissa Van Gorkum, staff to the committee. Before you is Senate Bill 5386, reducing administrative complexity by increasing transparency of revenue flows for activities funded by document recording fees. This bill comes to you at the request of the Department of Commerce. By way of background, state and local homeless housing programs receive funding from homeless housing and assistance surcharges collected by each county auditor when certain documents documents are recorded. There are currently four surcharges in the statute, a $100 recorded document surcharge, a $13 affordable housing for all surcharge, a $62 local homeless housing and assistance surcharge, and an $8 local homeless housing and assistance surcharge. The statute outlines the state and local distributions of each amount. Um, and specific uses related to affordable housing and homelessness, which are all provided in the bill report. Under the bill before you, the surcharges are combined to create one $183 surcharge related to affordable housing and homeless services, and the distribution of funds is amended. Of the $183 surcharge, 31% is retained by the county, and the remainder is distributed to the state, with 13% going to the affordable housing for all account to be used for grants for building operations and maintenance costs for housing projects or units within housing projects that are in the state's housing trust fund portfolio are affordable to extremely low-income households and require a supplement to rent income to cover ongoing operating costs and also grants to support building operations, maintenance, and support service costs for permanent supportive housing projects or units within housing projects that have received public capital funding. 2% of the state portion is distributed to landlord mitigation program, and the statute allows Commerce to use a portion of that funding for administration of that program. And the last 54% of the surcharge is distributed to the Home Security Fund account to administer the homeless housing program, provide homelessness assistance grants program, and funding for permanent supportive housing program administered by the Office of Apple Health and Homes. A fiscal note was requested but is not yet available. There's no companion to this bill, and that concludes my remarks unless there are any questions. Do we have any questions for staff? I'm not seeing any. I see Senator Robinson. Come on up, welcome, and tell us about your bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Senator June Robinson, representing the 38th Legislative District. Really pleased to bring this bill uh, forward this year. This is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, I, I've been involved <coughs> in um, passing document recording fee bills, um, whether as an advocate or as a legislator for a number of years. So I'm aware of the way that, with all good intention, we have, um, created a spider web of um, fees and uh, direction in which to where those fees should go, uh, local and state splits. Um, as a budget writer, <laughs> it is extremely challenging every year to unwind um, <clears throat> these accounts, the dollars that are flowing in, um, and where they need to be spent. So I'm very grateful that the Department of Commerce uh, did the work to um, map out this mess that we've created. And um, I do not want anyone to lose funding or for funding to go uh, to places that it's not currently intended to go, but I want to make these document recording fees understandable, transparent, um, and quite frankly, manageable. That is my goal. I know that you will, will hear concerns. I will work with uh, stakeholders uh, to uh, try to honor uh, those concerns, but as I just uh, texted someone, I am also adamant about cleaning up this mess, so. <laughs> yes, um, the bill seems like it's uh, going to improve efficiency uh, and transparency, so I appreciate uh, you bringing it forward. Do we have any questions for the prime sponsor? 
I'm not seeing any. Thank you very much, Senator Robinson and Madam Vice Chair. I think we have five uh, people on uh, testimony. Yes, ma'am. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Let's call forward Juliana Rowe and Ted Kelleher in person, and let's pull up Vicki Dalton on Zoom, and on deck on Zoom will be Kelly Ryder and Lauren Fay. Go ahead, Ted, you're right there. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the committee. I'm Ted Kelleher, Housing Policy Director at the Department of Commerce, here to testify in strong support of 5386. I wanna thank the sponsors for supporting this proposal to reduce complexity and increase transparency. Simply put, this is a cleanup bill only. This bill is not intended to increase, does not increase the current fee that is charged today to record a document. It consolidates four fees that are spread across different RCWs into one place so they can be easily seen and understood. And it makes no meaningful changes in how the money is used. Um, the first recording fee was recorded 20 years ago. It's been amended many years over and over again, and, and oftentimes at the near the end of the session, and for people involved in that process, you know, it can be quickly done late at night. And so there's a layers of law that have been passed. It does make it difficult to understand. It does increase ambiguity. It increases audit risk the way it's written because it's, it's not entirely clear um, exactly how they implement it. So we're working really hard to, to to take all that complexity, boil it down and keep it simple, we're welcome to any additional feedback that supports the goal of maintaining current policy while making the law more transparent. Thank you for your support of this proposal. Thank you very much, Juliana. Good morning, Senator Cooter, members of the committee. I'm Juliana Rowe here on behalf of the Washington State Association of Counties, and we too are in support of this bill. And um, we really appreciate Commerce reaching out to us and working with us to make sure that um, none of the policies necessarily were changed, but that this is just a streamlining bill. So it's always great when we co can collaborate with our partners. And as Ted said, over the years, there's been a patchwork of additions and updates to the document recording fee that have created ambiguity and additional administrative work. And by streamlining these fees, the bill makes things simpler and easier to understand and implement. And so counties fully support any bill that makes our work easier and less complicated. Thank you. Thank you. And we're going to go all the way to Spokane to Vicki Dalton. Welcome, Vicki. Well, good morning, Chair and committee members. I'm Vicki Dalton, Spokane County Auditor, speaking on behalf of the Washington State Association of County Auditors. Wasaka supports the passage of this bill for the cleanup that it brings to the administrative process of collecting and then remitting these housing surcharges that are on the documents we record. And please understand, we take no position on the underlying policy of the housing surcharges, only on administration. As Ted said, during the past two decades, these three surcharges have been created and then they've been amended several times, which has resulted in some really complicated formulas and inconsistent exemptions among the three that are difficult to administer. So the formulas for calculating the individual components of the surcharges are at best, convoluted. For example, <clears throat> the portion for landlord mitigation that's in the affordable housing surcharge is calculated as 3 thirteenths of 40% of 95% of the $13 portion of the $37 surcharge. Thank God I'm a CPA. <laughs> and some of the others are really just as bad. Yeah, that is actually the formula. The spreadsheet is 26 lines long by seven columns wide. It's massive. Um, but the exemptions also are different for the three housing surcharges. So while there's some government liens that are exempt from all three surcharges, there's other government liens that are only exempt from the original ending homelessness surcharge. And these differences cause a lot of confusion about what the appropriate fee is for any particular document and when someone sends in the wrong dollar amount, we have to reject that document, which takes time and is really uh, an administrative burden for us in our offices and very frustrating for the customers who are submitting those documents. Um, we did note there's one additional housekeeping change that requires an amendment. Um, the umbrella RCW citation for county auditor fees, which is 3618.010, it needs to be amended to reflect the RCWs that are being repealed 
by this bill. And we will submit an amendment for your consideration. Again, it's only housekeeping. We do urge passage of this housekeeping bill to clean up the administrative process of collecting and then remitting these housing surcharges on our recorded documents. And as a group, again, we would like to thank Department of Commerce and Ted Kelleher for reaching out and working with us to clean this process up. I'm available for any questions. All right, thank you. It sounds like uh, if we pass this bill, you'll be saving yourself some headache medicine, right? <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, we have two more uh, testifiers, uh, and thank you, Vicki. Uh, Kelly Ryder is up first, and Lauren Fay will be next. So, Kelly, go ahead. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the committee. For the record, my name is Kelly Ryder, and I serve as the Chief of Staff for King County's Department of Community and Human Services. I want to thank Senator Robinson, the bill sponsor, as well as the Department of Commerce uh, for their continued efforts to increase access to affordable housing and promote housing stability. As you have heard this morning, uh, the simplicity of document recording fees has been a long time coming, uh, and we absolutely support this effort. That said, King County does have one significant concern. In section one, subsection four of the bill, the bill as drafted reduces funding eligible for permanent supportive housing, the best tool we have for addressing unsheltered homelessness for those with physical and behavioral health disabilities. For the past 18 months, since the House Bill 1277 document recording fees were enacted, King County has consistently communicated our eagerness to direct a portion of these document reporting fees to livable wages and expanded services in existing as well as new homeless housing. The providers across our region are struggling to recruit and retain workers amidst inequitable wages, rising inflation, and residents' rising behavioral health needs. Organizations report that one in five staff positions are currently vacant, and the service needs in these buildings have dramatically increased while the workers have been leaving the sector for better pay and benefits in industries like fast food and other jobs. As long as existing housing is at risk, providers will be hard pressed to open the new housing we need to bring more people inside. We're excited to partner with the state to address this challenge. We hope to work with Senator Robinson and this committee on amendments that first, maintain flexibility for counties to fund the programs that work best in their context, and second, strengthen existing permanent supportive housing across King County. We've already begun conversations with the Department of Commerce and Senator Robinson about our goals for this legislation, and we appreciate the opportunity to work with them to address our concerns. Thank you all for your continued partnership in securing safe, healthy, affordable homes for more Washingtonians. Thank you, Kelly. And it sounds like you're already in touch with Senator Robinson, so that's good. Uh, Lauren, welcome. Thank you so much. Good morning, Chair Cooter and members of the committee. My name is Lauren Fay, and I'm here on behalf of DESC, one of the largest permanent supportive housing providers in the state, working out of King County. I've signed in other this morning uh, due to a small technical concern. Um, DESC definitely supports Commerce's goal to streamline accounts and funds related to document recording fees. We are concerned that the bill's methodology could have an unintended consequence of reducing funding for the state PSH OMS. Uh, the program that provides operations, maintenance, and service dollars that ensure permanent supportive housing is affordable and accessible for people living on extremely low incomes with disabilities. This appears to be due to rounding down that ex uh, the existing percentage of funding dedicated to this use from 13.11% to a flat 13% in the affordable housing for all account. We are worried this may diminish existing resources the state allocates, which puts at risk the existing awards we rely on to serve our tenants. The pandemic has hit people experiencing homelessness and housing instability hard. Our tenants are feeling the effects of the pandemic through increased behavioral health symptoms, and many rely on the daily care and support we provide to maintain their health and their homes. Permanent supportive housing is a key strategy to ending homelessness. We are very supportive of the concept of improving the efficiency of fund sources that have a proven track record of so much good for the communities we serve. We hope to collaborate with the bill sponsor and the Department of Commerce to develop an amendment that will ensure the current funding level for permanent supportive housing operations, maintenance, and services is preserved so that we can continue to bring this proven model of ending chronic homelessness to scale. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Lauren. And uh, the prime sponsor is open to speaking with you, so make sure you reach out to her. All right, with that, we're gonna close the public hearing on uh, Senate Bill 5386, and we're gonna open the public hearing on Senate Bill 5435, and staff, will you please 